Hi, I'm Kristen Burt for LifeScript.com. Don't eat this if you're taking that. That's the title of Dr. Madeline Fernstrom's new book on the ultimate guide to food and medicine interaction. With over 70% of Americans taking at least one prescription medication, it's important to be aware of any potentially harmful interactions with food. In this exclusive LifeScript interview, Dr. Fernstrom gives us the inside scoop on foods like green leafy vegetables, grapefruit, and garlic, and how they interact with the common prescription drug. Dr. Fernstrom, don't eat this if you're taking that. What inspired you and your husband to write this book? You know, as neuroscientists, pharmacologists, and nutrition experts, we got loads of questions from our family, from our colleagues saying, you guys know so much, we have to get this information from you. Doctors, pharmacists, and regular people need this information. So we decided to undertake this. And I tell you, we know why people didn't write this. It's really hard. It's a huge amount of work to look at the real scientific evidence behind what foods affect certain medications. Because there's a lot of uh, personal information and strong beliefs, but it doesn't make it fact. And because my brother, as a family doctor, would be asking me as well, and our own relatives, we said, now's the time to do this. Certain foods were, were so shocking to me because the alcohol we know and the dairy maybe we know about as well, but something like green leafy vegetables, how can that interact with medication? You know, you look at this, kale is the superfood. You know, what could, be, what could be wrong with that? The idea is these are very healthy vegetables, dark greens, but if you take certain medications like certain blood thinners, this is a problem because they contain vitamin K, which promotes blood clotting, and a blood thinner tries to avoid clotting, so they're at odds with each other. And so if you have a lot of green leafy vegetables like kale and other things, you're gonna have a problem with the medication working as directed. So you have to limit these kinds of foods. And what's most important is not eliminate things from your diet, but you have to have the same amount every day and keep a low amount so your medicine can be titrated and be arranged based on what your diet is, because this can really interfere with things. But the good news here is if you take blood thinners and you go, I just can't cut down on my green leafy vegetables, you don't want to just stop taking your medicine. That's always the worst thing. Medicine first and you can, you can adjust the food. Talk to your doctor because there are some blood thinners that do not um, have this interaction, and that's a good thing. What are some other foods that we should maybe be wary of if we're on certain medications? Something that many people should be aware of is grapefruit or grapefruit juice. And this is from anywhere from cholesterol-lowering drugs like statins to diabetes drugs to antidepressants to some migraine medications and other pain medications. And why is this? You're thinking, gosh, what could be wrong with grapefruit? Great vitamin C, a great citrus fruit. But grapefruits contain a compound that when, go, when it goes through the digestive tract can actually block the breakdown of many medications. And so what does that mean to the body? Translated, it means that there's way too much medicine in your system, not used as intended. And so you may need to limit or avoid grapefruit. And people say, well, limit, what does that mean? That means no more than a half a grapefruit or a small six ounce glass. But this is all very individual. And some medications, let's take the cholesterol lowering statins. People think, okay, I can never have grapefruit again if I take a statin. That's only for certain statins and newer ones like Crestor do not require this elimination. So if you're someone again that goes, I just love my grapefruit, I can't cut that out, talk to your doctor about maybe switching a medication. But you do have to be mindful because food can act to either promote having too much drug in the body or interfering with the action and getting too less of the, of the medicine. Another one I thought, onions and garlic. I love to add that to my food for, for flavor but you might want to worry about this if you're on certain medications as well. Right, you know, surprising to many people is that, you know, food does have active ingredients and garlic and onions are a perfect example. They act in, you know, when you use them in cooking, as in food, as weak blood thinners. Now that can be a good thing and you hear, oh, people that cook with a lot of garlic, you know, have, you know, fewer problems with their heart, etc. And that's actually true. The problem is when you start to take this as a supplement and you see concentrated amounts and people in our country especially say, why well, eat the food? I can just take a supplement. So I'll take a garlic pill instead of the garlic. And the problem is this is concentrated amounts of the active ingredient that when you take blood thinners, you don't want to have this interaction because it can actually promote it and have too much of that. So eat your garlic and onions, not too much, and avoid those supplements. Well, you make a good point about supplements in general. 
they can interact with your prescription medication. So that's really important to disclose to your doctor. Like, hey, I'm taking these type of supplements. Will it interfere with my prescription? You know, people often don't think you hear dietary supplement. Oh, diet, that must be okay. You know, what's the worst that can happen? Sort of nothing, maybe they're not effective. The problem is many of these are very effective and their impact can mimic what your medication is. Something as, as benign as cinnamon. You go, cinnamon, what could be wrong? That actually, in larger amounts, can have a blood sugar lowering effect. So if you're already taking a medicine to help with your diabetes and lower your blood sugar, you can have a problem. But probably more importantly with dietary supplements is there is very little regulation compared to over-the-counter medicines or prescription medicines. They look like they're regulated by the government, but they're really not. So it's sort of the user must be aware there's no guarantee of dose or purity. So be careful and always, as you said, disclose to your doctor what you're taking because these kinds of interactions can promote your drug action. And you really want to avoid all kinds of social media and things that's saying, forget about your medicine, just use these dietary supplements because they're not the same. And, you know, one question that sort of like came out of all of this and listening to you, we really need to be advocates for our own health, don't we? We have to take control of our own health, especially in these times. And if you take a medication, it really is your duty as a consumer and a health advocate for yourself to know what things impact the action. It's hard enough to take a medicine and you're thinking, what can I do myself to optimize my health and how my medications will work? And food is one of them. And the good thing is food is under your control. You can make these changes, but first you have to get the information. And is everyone as surprised as I am that all these foods interact with medications? Are you hearing the feedback from your book? You know, the feedback is amazing. People are surprised by different things. And in fact, in researching this, my husband and I were surprised at certain things that you might think, gee, they're perfectly healthy. What could they do? Well, thank you so much for sharing all of this because I think this is an eye-opener for a lot of us. Ah, uh, thanks. My pleasure.